Before we finish, and maybe I'll give you some time for questions, I just want to conclude the idea. In Elul, it's a plea bargain. You can achieve a lot. It's starting soon. From the minute it starts, if you don't pray early enough, pray early. If you don't pray in Minyan, pray in Minyan. If you're not Makpid Chalav Israel, be Makpid Chalav Israel. If you don't dress so Jewish, try to dress Jewish. Everything that you're not doing 100%, try to work to improve. It will work well for you. It's worth it. Try to do things that you're normally not doing. Hopefully after it will remain by you. But if not, at least for the preparation for the judgment day, if the Satan comes and says to Hashem, hey, it's not fair. 11 months he was doing that, now all of a sudden he became tzaddik. So Hashem would answer, that's the whole point, no? Plea bargain. We're making a deal now. That's legal. That's it. It's legal. It's, it's mamash working. If a person doesn't take advantage on Elul, uh, how much he has to cry after that? One pray of the Aseret Yemet Shuva. One. It could be more powerful than the, all the prayers of the year. That's how powerful it can be in Aseret Yemet Shuva between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. One very important thing is to pay back what you owe. If you come to the Judgment Day Rosh Hashanah and you owe money to people, it's very bad for you. Very, very bad. It's one thing Hashem never forgives a person if he steals money from people. He must pay them back everything to the last penny. If you cannot pay, let's say you owe so much money, I'm going to pay all of that. There is a way out. You have to begin to approach the people. Let's say you owe somebody $5,000. And you owe another one ten, and you owe the credit card fifty, and you owe all kinds of money you owe. You call the people that you owe money, and you tell them, I cannot pay you the full amount. I know you've been running after me for years. I didn't pay you. I owe you five thousand dollars. I can't really pay you. How about if you if I send you five hundred dollars and you'll be more the rest? You forgive me for the rest. Would you agree to that? If he says yes, right away the $5,000 is deleted from your account in Shamayim. You gave him $500 instead of $5,000, he agree, you're done. You're done with him, he can't change his mind. Once he gave Mechila, finished. You call the credit card company, you don't pay them five years already. They got tired of you, they don't call you anymore. You owe them the money, you cannot steal money from Goim, you can't. So you tell them, Five years ago, I used to owe you $50,000, and you gave up on me. But I became religious, and I don't want to be a person that owe money. But obviously, I cannot pay you 50000 How about I give you 10 cents on a dollar? They'll grab it from experience, I tell you. I told it to a lot of people. They take it. They forward you to the collection. Right away, somebody comes. He gives you a fax that instead of 50,000, you only give $5,000 or three or two, whatever, or even in payments sometimes. Small payments for two years, three years. And, they, and you don't care so much about the credit right now. You want to be clean in Shamaim. You don't want to go there, you owe money to the whole world. Someone that steals money, even if he's the biggest tzaddik, even if he's the biggest rabbi in the world, and he's so impressive with his religion level, but he steals money or he don't pay the money that he owes people, can never enter heaven. Never. Nothing will help him. Even if he's the Mashiach, he cannot enter heaven. Nothing. Nobody can enter heaven with stolen money in his hands. That's what he says in the Tanakh hundreds of times. Mi ale be'ar Hashem neki kapayim uvar levav. Who's going to make to Olam Abba, to the next world, someone that his hands are clean from stealing.